Oh yeah, the suspension's tight. Tight, tight, tight. So much grip. Hi, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite Havana Warehouse, Sarah here, with another car review. And today I have the 2020 Cadillac CT5 V-Series all-wheel drive. I know looks are subjective, but this right here is a good looking car, as well as the CT4 and the CT6. I think the entire series just absolutely nailed it styling wise. When you see the headlights and the grill on this car, you instantly know it's a Cadillac. They have their own unique styling that they incorporated into this, and it doesn't just blend in with all the other sedans on the market. I also gotta say Summit White is a perfect choice for the V series with all the gloss black accents. It makes it look like a stormtrooper. So if you're confused what V series stands for, it's basically like an M Sport Edition or an S line edition. You get some stuff added to the base CT5, but it's not quite the black wing with the supercharged V8, even though this does have more power than the standard CT5. You get these 19 inch wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, Brembo brakes, Magna Ride 4.0, and an ELSD. You're probably wondering what that neon green sh is in the background. Honestly, I have no idea, but I think next time I come film out here, I'm gonna bring a trash bag because there, there's a lot of trash out here. People are gross. Open the trunk, please. I've never seen a car include one of these before, but it has a funnel in case you need to fill a car up with a gas can. It's weird. If you look over here, this little compartment hides the battery in the back for weight distribution. Cadillacs have done that for quite a while though. Overall, that's a pretty decent sized trunk on this car. This is such a good looking back end. And the tail light, it almost looks like a Valkyrie or some kind of a flying bird. And then you get the quad exhaust tips down here in the bottom with the body matched rear diffuser. Whoever designed this car was a bit of a show off in art class because if you look at the symmetry and the design of this panel behind the rear window, it's almost the same as the tail light, yet they both look good. As well as the top of the trunk lid, it's almost the same shape is the front grille. I don't know how you pull that off, but they did. Moving to the interior, the first thing I noticed the very first night I hopped in this car was just how tight everything in here is. It's just the fit and the finish is not like I've seen in a Cadillac or even a GM product before. And I'm not bashing General Motors by saying that. I'm saying it's a huge improvement in here. The carbon fiber that's found throughout the interior has red inside the weave and it ties in perfectly with the red stitching that is all throughout the interior as well. There's so many little subtle details inside here. The inside of the rear seat pouches are aligned in the whisper beige color to match the whisper beige and jet black interior, which is also an option. It's a weird material though. It feels like something you'd line your ass with. There is so much tech packed into the interior of this car. If I tried to show you everything that it does, this video would be over an hour long, but thankfully there's Google. So you can just look stuff up. I'm gonna show you the stuff that you can't find on Google, like how well these seats bolster. It's got good bolstering. It's a comfortable seat too. It's heated, it's ventilated. The steering wheel is also heated. There is one USB-C charge port back here in the rear seat, as well as an old school cigarette lighter outlet. So that means they phased out traditional USB, but they kept the outlet design from like 30 years ago. Okay. The wireless charge pad for your smartphone has a warning label on there that shows if you place metal objects like coins or paper clips between your phone and the charge pad, it will actually catch books on fire. The 10 inch touchscreen display integrates a lot better with the dash than some cars I've seen. It doesn't look like an afterthought that was just kind of glued to the top of the dashboard. I did find this little knob dongle on the center console here to control the infotainment system. Pretty much useless because all I ever used was touching the screen or the volume and the tuning knob just below it. You don't really need to use this thing. I don't even know why they include it. The Bose sound system was a little bit of a letdown because of the fact that certain bass notes would make the deck lid back there rattle. And I just overall wasn't really impressed by it because some people want to know if you can nap back here. Well, the bulge in the center is nice if you have wide hips because it just kind of cups your, your side nicely. Yeah. 
I could totally take a nap back here. I don't want to do that in an abandoned warehouse, though. That's how bad things happen at movies. Oh, whoa. The sun visors are so thin. They're like wafer crisps. Oh, the LEDs on the vanity mirrors are super pretty too. If there was a category for best looking sun visor on a car, I think the CT5 V-Series would take the win. Cookie. No way. Somebody left the plastic protectant on here because it's new. <gasps> it's like peeling sunburn. So satisfying. Are you, <laughs> good thing I have the window down. I got locked in the back seat. That would've been weird. All right. Time to start this thing up. Cold start on this car is, whoa, what is the seat doing? You can hear the turbo spooling up. Sounds good. All right, now the important stuff. As far as driver controls and gauges go, so you do have a mode selector button in the center console that allows you to go from touring to sport to track to snow and ice. And this is all wheel drive, so you could party in the snow with it if you want to. Now there's a my mode where you can configure it however you want it. As well on the steering wheel, you have a V mode button so you can get to business when you need to. There's quite a bit of stuff in the gauges on this car. You have lots of safety options. You go through this menu over here, and then for your phone, your navigation, your music, the info, you have a boost gauge right here, which is kind of cool. You go to the last one on the far left, and it says V for V mode. And in there, you get a G-force gauge, zero to 60 timer, also a lap timer, and then a bunch of temperatures to monitor. But enough of that, let's get to driving. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. I'm going to put it into track mode, and then from track mode, if you double press your traction control button, it gives you some more options for performance traction. So you can go wet, dry, sport one, sport two, which turns off active handling, and then race. This also has launch control, which may or may not be used, I can't tell you, but what you do is you press the brake, stab the gas, let off the brake, and let it eat. Ready? Go! Oh, jeez! Oh my god! The launch control on this car is no joke! Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good enough. Pop the hood. Hello. Welcome to Garage Science of Sarah. Powering this 2020 Cadillac CT5 V Series is General Motors Leggy. Say LGY 3.0 liter twin turbo V6 that produces 360 horsepower at 5600 RPM and 405 pound feet of torque from 2400 to 4400. RPM. I like the design of these little stripey guys right here on your dual intakes as well as the actual engine cover. I has got the Cadillac logo right there and it says twin turbo and then all the stripes. It's a good looking engine bay. For those of you that are booing because you see a V badge on here and you don't hear a snarling V8 under the hood, there's one coming, but this is a perfect middle ground, especially because of the price point between a regular CT5 and then your bat crazy supercharged V8 version. I like that they're offering this V series with a twin turbo six cylinder, especially paired with the all wheel drive. It's time for the braking test. See what these Brembo's got. No one behind me. Poop. Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. The drivetrain found in the CT5V is one of two offered. It is the all-wheel drive version, which is $2,000 more. And paired with this three liter twin turbo V6, I think it's perfect, especially the fact that it has the joint developed between Ford and General Motors 10-speed automatic transmission. This is one of my favorite automatics. I would put it on par with the ZF8 speed. I like it that much. I get asked all the time in the comment section about turning radius, so maybe I'll start including this in my reviews from here on out. But um, considering this is all wheel drive, it's not the greatest, but it's also not the worst. 
I've ever seen. <laughs> If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them, starting with the bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this 2020 Cadillac CT5 V Series all wheel drive is getting a rating of. Stop. I've never done this before, but when I recorded the first part you were just watching, I had not tested launch control yet. I was basing my opinion on only normal on the road performance of acceleration and it deserves its score to be raised. So I'm giving it a rating of 2.2 beans. This car is considerably quicker once you launch it. Next is a cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value. And this well-equipped CT5 V series is getting a rating of 3.1 cookie. I think when you look at some of the European competitors, this is a fair deal. 57 grand is quite a bit, but there's quite a bit of tech pack into this thing and the performance is got everything you need. So I say it's a good deal. Lastly though, is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a car. And the CT5 V series is getting a rating of three whole penguins. I like the CT5 V series. I cannot wait until the Blackwing edition comes out though. This car is gonna be so damn good with a supercharged V8 under the hood. And overall, it is by far leaps and bounds above any of the past Cadillacs I've driven. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.